in that covenant that was fading, he had to wear a veil. So how much greater should the glory be in this covenant, in a covenant where the glory is ever increasing? Mm -hmm. So we should be looking around saying, where's all the shiny Christians? You know, not the polished bald heads, you know, <laughs> but the shiny Christian, those walking in the glory of God. God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour out his spirit on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring, where we contend for that promise outpouring. We equip for that outpouring so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us a good friend, James Stone. We did an episode with him, I think it was episode 203, and it's really ministered mm. to a lot of people. We called it the Praying Prophesying Plumber. And so we have this same man with us today, and we're going to talk about things like the covenant of glory. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you tuning in. And we want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net, and be sure that you have signed up for our email lists. You have an opportunity to hear from us, and we'll have an opportunity to stay in tune with you, to stay in touch with you. And we also want to encourage you to be with us May 21st through 24th, 2025 for our 50th annual gathering. This is the Global Outpouring Convention 2025, where we're meeting together at the St. Louis Airport Marriott, and we're going to have a glorious time in worship and in the Word, in intercession, reaching out to the Lord for His heart for the nations. And just meeting and making new relationships with people who are just like you. It's going to be family camp. There's something for every age. And we want to encourage you to come and bring your family. Come and bring someone that is hungry for God because we're going to have an appointment with God in that place. We really realize that we are on the threshold of the outpouring that the Lord told about in Joel 2.28. And this is the theme of this convention. We hope that you'll be able to be with us. It will be life changing for you and you'll begin to make relationships that'll go on for eternity. So James, thank you so much for being with us today. It's good to be here. We really appreciate you. We appreciate yes, you coming yeah. alongside and helping us out with plumbing, but we also appreciate the anointing that you bring and the word of the Lord that you bring because you're a deep well and we, oh, I guess that's sort of a plumbing thing too, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, but it's there. <laughs> So I do want to say this, that that the podcast that we did with you before, episode 203, was really, really well received, particularly by our young people. And I was just so encouraged how they have picked up on that and getting the idea that you can be a really anointed man of God and still be doing kind of mundane sort of things, but you're, you're <laughs> being used of the Lord you can get into places that you might not otherwise get into if you've got REV in front of your name. Well, the tool bag will open doors that a Bible will not. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's well put. That's well put. <laughs> well put. But you carry the Bible with you in your heart. Yes, ma'am. So tell us what the Lord has been doing since we had you on it with us last. Well, he's doing Lord stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, he has all the authority. Yes. And, you know, he's not afraid to let you know that if you'll listen. Mm -hmm. And so the really cool thing about it is I have control of my own life. And if I submit the control of my life to his authority, yeah. then he moves in and he brings everything he has with him. Amen. You know, and so there's no limit to what he can bring. You know, I cannot begin to tell you. I mean, and I don't have to. You know yourself how amazing it is to walk through, you know, as you would say, mundane tasks. And here in the heavenly host, you know, mm -hmm. just singing in your heart, speaking in your ear, and, you know, and you're walking into somebody's life that, you know, they've not seen anything positive or good. They're watching the news or looking oh, yeah. at the political yeah. situation. The Depressed. world's falling apart at the seams mm -hmm. and everything's just going crazy. Mm -hmm. And they have a plumbing problem, <laughs> which is just another issue in their otherwise messed up mundane life that, right. is, you know, they're just waiting for it to all be over. Yeah. So... 
I come in there and I'm not looking to be a minister. I'm not looking to take up an offering. I'm not looking to get somebody on a newsletter or a mailing list or invite them to a church or a function or an event or a conference. I'm going there to make money. <laughs> you know, I'm going there. I have a skill set and training. I know mm-hmm. how to fix plumbing issues. I go in there and then all of a sudden I begin to hear the voice of the Lord and I see into the heart of that individual that mm-hmm. I'm talking to and the compassion of heaven begins mm-hmm. to break me. Mm. And sometimes none of that happens. It's just heaven is there. And since I carry heaven with me, yes. the demonic entities in that person's life that's screaming 24 mm-hmm. seven in their heart and in their mm-hmm. mind yeah. is suspended from activity Hallelujah! While, and they get peace while I'm there. It took me a long time to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay? Oh, okay. But that's just really amazing because I can say things to people in that setting and they look at me and they say, I never thought about it that way before. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're receptive now because they're thinking at something from a different perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you only look at math as a challenge because you hate math, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but yet if you can look at it from a different angle, all of a sudden something clicks. Now it's not a a problem anymore because you understand it. And it's just been really amazing. I've literally had people fall out in the spirit while I'm working on their kitchen sink. Oh, wow. You know, and I'm like, God, you should, you know, he's like, I'll do what I want to do, you know? And, you know, so I come out and there they are. Now they maybe are on their knees or crying, weeping, whatever. And the difference oh. between crying and weeping is, is mucus, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, so the kitchen's a good place to be because there's lots of paper towels. And so, you know, and you come out and you begin to minister to this person in a way that they would never get in church. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because okay. number one, they're not going to pull down their guard because they're they're guarding against those people that hurt them the last time they were in this church. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. but that wall that you put up in your heart to keep people from hurting you, whether it's relational hurt or professional hurt or governmental hurt, whatever that, that same wall keeps Holy Spirit out of that place mm. where he needs to be because there's a wound there. Amen. You know, so God spoke to me several years ago and said he would make me a Trojan horse and I would carry him into places in the church belt, basically, yeah. where he's not welcome. And yeah. the next thing I know, I found myself being a plumber doing service calls and getting encounters like that where I've <laughs> ministered to heathens and I've ministered to pastors, Pentecostal preachers, Baptist preachers, Methodist wow. preachers, you know, <laughs> deputies, doctors, you yeah. know, lawyers, mm-hmm. people from all walks of life. If you have plumbing, I'm your guy. And so, <laughs> okay, you know, I get to go in there. And if I see heaven do something, I can respond to that. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even know what God's doing. And I get a phone call a year, two years down the road. And they'll say something like, hey, is this James Stone? And I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you worked on my shower, you know, two <laughs> years ago. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, she's fixing to tell me that it's been leaking ever since I left and the floor <laughs> fell through, you know. And uh, no, it goes like this. Well, while you were at my house, you prayed for my husband. Mm-hmm. And after you left, God healed his back. Glory mm. to God. And my husband got saved. Thank you, Now Jesus. he's working a full-time job. He's off a of disability, and he's led his entire family to Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're having a family reunion, and my husband wanted me to reach out to you to see if you would come and sit with our family at the park and oh, yeah. minister to our family. Wow. Amen. And so I've got that's to amazing. do that a couple of times, and that's fun, to wow. minister to actually a family group. you know. Beautiful. And they will wow. bring you anything, literally anything mm-hmm. you want to drink, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll just keep you going. And I went to one, it was like three hours I sat there and ministered, and 50-some-odd people come to the Lord. I mean, it was wow. amazing. Wow. And uh, I thought you said he led his whole family to Jesus, but yet here's all these people unsaved. But it's a whole mm-hmm. extended family. Of course, it's Arkansas, mm-hmm. so some people there are just looking for— a date, <laughs> but, uh, and then all of a sudden they have an encounter with Jesus. Wow. And so it's just an amazing life to be able to live. And I remember one time we we're living in a place, my wife and I, and we didn't get any cell signal where we lived. Uh-huh. And so if the phone rang inside the house, it was kind of an amazing thing. <laughs> well, my wife will be mad when she, she won't be mad, but she's not going to be happy when I share it like this. But we were actually in a fight. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've been married a long time, <laughs> you, you've. Dif- disagreements happen. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> we were in a disagreement, okay? And it wasn't pretty. <laughs> and I didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be there. But yet we were both going to die on that hill. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> and my phone rang. And I answered it. And I stepped out on the front porch and I was hoping it was a service call, you know, just so I could exit. And this guy says, Hey, 
this man, and he gave me a name. He said, he give me your number and said you could help. And now mm-hmm. I'm immediately thinking plumbing. Because yeah. I knew the sure. other guy through plumbing. Uh-huh. And he says, I said, okay, what you got? He says, my brother's been in a wreck. And he's laying on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And he's dying. Mm-hmm. Can you come and pray for him? Yeah. Wow. And I looked at Renee. I walked back in. My wife's name is Rachel Renee. Okay. So if I say Rachel, it's the same woman as Renee. But I, <laughs> I looked at her and I said, Renee, I said, I've got to go. And she saw my face and she knew. And she's, you know, her own testimony to me. Because I left and she said, when I saw his face, I just started praying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I get my work truck and I drive 45 minutes one way. Oh, wow. And I get to this accident scene where this young man had rolled his truck and he got hung up in the steering wheel or something and he partially ejected and couldn't be fully ejected so he was literally crushed five or six times Ooh. before he got thrown clear of the truck oh my and so this was uh, i'm not going to try to describe it but it was the ugliest scene i've ever walked up on okay mm. so you know i saw the family and i walked up to the family they said he's over here and I said, okay. So I began to walk that way. And there was a couple of paramedics. They weren't paramedics. They were first responders. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they didn't have a paramedic license. But they were doing CPR on this young man. And once you start CPR on somebody, yeah. you can't stop until somebody official relieves you. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. But I walked up there and they said, sir, you need to stay back. And I said, look, I'm a minister. And the family's asked me to come pray. And they said, look, this guy was probably dead when we got here, but he certainly passed away now. So there, he's beyond prayer. And I said, look, (laughs) this will make this family feel a whole lot better if they know I came up here and prayed over their brother. Please let me do what I drove over here to do. They said, man, you don't want to see this. I said, look, I've been a firefighter. I've been in scenes like this. It'll be okay. They said, well, do what you want. So I walked around them and got where his head was. And I got on my knees and sat on my feet. And I just put my hands just kind of out in front of me over his shoulders. And I begin to just pray. And it's not a prayer that you would write in a book mm-hmm. and sell a million copies. I'm not Jabez. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? And I'm just James. <laughs> and I just said, God, give this man a chance. Yeah. He needs your help. And suddenly he sucks in a breath. Mm. Okay. Now, this is hard to explain without being really graphic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. But every bone in his body was broken. Mm. Okay. His jawbone was broken. You know, his orbital bones were just non-existent. That's um, over the eyes. Yeah, it was just, it was terrible. It was horrible to look at, okay? And when he took in a breath, his chest, instead of rising and falling like yours or mine would, you could just see that air coming through his skin, through his clothes. Oh, my. You know, because he was completely Crushed. destroyed. Hmm. And, of course, these first responders, they absolutely went nuts, okay? And they come alive, and they start talking to him, and they're calling him by name. Mm. And they said, hey, you've been in an accident. We're helping you, and help is on the way. And it was at that very moment that I heard a siren way off in the distance, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And then they pushed their thumb toward me and said, this guy here is a minister, and he's been praying for you. Mm. And his eyes pointed back up. I mean, he couldn't move his neck. He couldn't, mm-hmm. even when he talked, his mouth couldn't move. Yeah. But he, his eyes shot up in the top of his head and he looked at me and he says, help me. Mm. And I said, man, oh. I said, I can't help you. I said, I'm praying for you, but you need to ask Jesus for help. You have to have Jesus help you right now. And he said, Jesus, help me. Wow. Jesus, save me. Ah. And then he just, that, he said, save me. And he took another breath and it just escaped his body. And he quit breathing. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, in that few seconds where he was talking, I mean, uh-huh. me and this guy, we were already on our way around the world with a testimony that nobody would believe <laughs> yeah. in my mind. I'm just being honest, yeah. okay? And when he breathed out, I was devastated, mm-hmm. you know? And I know I know that he went to heaven. Absolutely. And that was the main thing. But in that moment, I'm emotional too, Yeah. okay? But I was able to go back to that family, and I said, hey— I'm sorry, but your brother has passed away. But before he passed away, he asked Jesus to save him. And if you ever want to see your brother again, you need to bring Jesus into your heart yeah. and make him your Savior. So it was in that moment that I walked away. They didn't ask me to come to the funeral, mm-hmm. okay? But a year or so later, this young man calls me. And this is a separate time, but it wasn't the time I told you about before. But he calls me and says, please come to Mountain View 
to our family reunion. We're having a family reunion at City Park. So I go, and this was a complete terrible drug culture family. Okay. Oh, wow. So I go and I minister to them one at a time. And these big drums, these 55 gallon drums, I have those in that park. And uh, with those big black trash bags, they filled up a whole 55 gallon trash bag full of drugs and drug paraphernalia, pornography, you know, wow. this whole family. So they all leave and I'm by myself. Hmm. I can't leave these drugs. Right, yeah. right. But I don't want to put them in my car, you right. know, yeah. <laughs> you know, throw them in the back of my truck and take off down the road. So I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I called a buddy of mine who worked for the county and I said, look, this is what's happened. I told him the family. And I said, now, if you're not on duty or you're on duty and you can't, I said, don't even come down here and don't do a report because I don't want people investigating. I said, you know, let this play out. You know, yeah. let these people, the ones that really made a transition in their life with Jesus, let this play out. And I said, if you can't help me, I'll call somebody in the state. I said, I'll have to wait here longer, but I'll wait for him. So he said, look, I'll be there in a minute. And he come and he says, my gosh, he said, that's a lot of stuff. You know, he's looking at this. And he said, I'll deal with it. And he just put it in the trunk of his cruiser and he left. Wow. And I had a conversation with him. He's just not a deputy there anymore. But later he told me, he says, this year, this was two years later, he said, this year in that family, he said they were the worst family in the county. Mm. Wow. He said, but this year there's going to be two people out of that family graduate from high school. And they're the first two people, he says, as far as I can look back, that's got out of high school without a criminal record. Glory to God. Wow. You know, and he says they've become one of the pillars of our county now, and they're, they help out in every way they can. They're not in jail. They're not. He said they still got some bad apples, you know, but in large part, that whole family has been transformed. Wow. wow. You know, Thanks so God. I just think it's amazing. And the weird thing about it, the encounter that I had with the other man mm -hmm. that met this guy that day was on a plumbing call, and all I did was release the kingdom of God into his life. And I didn't know him outside of that, but wow. I remembered him. He saw this guy in need and said, look, I know a guy that'll help you. Here's his number. I love it. And wow. so maybe being a plumber is not the most glamorous thing, you know, and, you know, <laughs> manly men don't raise their daughters up to look for plumbers to marry, you know, <laughs> and young men don't grow up. But, you know, they want to be doctors and lawyers and astronauts and race car drivers and movie stars. Nobody at eight says, I want to be a plumber, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't become a plumber until I was in my late thirties. Wow. So it's just been an amazing thing. And, but the weird thing about it is you don't have to be a plumber to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Christian plumber. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm a plumber who happens to be a Christian. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't believe in Christian athletes, you know, and things like that. <laughs> if you're an athlete, you happen to be a Christian, then be kingdom wherever you're at. Amen. Yeah. You know, so it's an amazing life to live. And I, I would probably Crazy. like it to be different. I, mean, I don't always <laughs> like being sweaty and dirty and work long hours and get called out in the middle of the night. Yeah. But at the same time, I've had so many encounters with God doing this, I don't know if I'd want to change it. Wow. Mm. So now you're also heading up healing rooms. We right? do. Tell us about that. Well, we're a part of the International Association of Healing Rooms, and that's mm -hmm. based in Spokane, Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's, you know, Cal Pierce yeah. heads up that organization, mm -hmm. really fine fellow. Yes. And we were there when he opened the rooms in Spokane. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and so was... we, I have a lot of respect for Cal and for the people in the office there. And Elaine and those guys, they work really hard to make sure we have what we need. But there's several thousand healing rooms around the world. I believe we did take a hit during COVID. We lost a lot of people quit. You know, their funding dried up. People wouldn't volunteer, mm -hmm. you know, through the lockdowns and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's bouncing back. Good. And it's really good. So we have a good time with that. But we're the state directors here in Arkansas and uh, regional directors for Region 12. Mm. So uh, we have a good time with them. So you don't have to do plumbing for them? Not the healing rooms. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you just get to do the God stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you can pardon the pun, I tell people when I go minister in churches and stuff, well, hey, I'm a minister and I minister prophetically. So if you got some stuff, you're probably going to get to deal with it today. But I'm a plumber <laughs> in my secular life. So my job, whether I'm here or whether I'm on the job, is to get the crap out. <laughs> so if you got some of that, and most of us do, get ready, you know. And so uh, being a minister is a lot like being a plumber. You deal with people at their worst. You yeah, know? that's true. And sometimes you get to deal with people in the best case scenarios. And so, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not much different. It really isn't. Because if you get down to where I can remember an old joke where the deacon board 
comes to the pastor and they're discussing a problem. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we've tried this and we've tried this and we've done all these options. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we really need to pray. <laughs> and the pastor's <laughs> like, has it come to that already? <laughs> <laughs> right. So a lot of people in their life, when we go and we do ministry, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, if you're in conference life, a lot of times people that attend conferences, they're a little bit further along in their walk, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And so you may not run into this a lot, but you do some. But it daily Sunday morning, Wednesday night, people walk in off the street into your churches. You're coming into people that are on their last leg. Mm-hmm. And they come yeah. there because, you know, hey, we're going to have to pray. It's come to that already. You know, mm-hmm. that's all we have left. And if God don't do something, this is going to not end well. So we get to deal with people a lot like that when they come to healing rooms. You know, a lot of times they've tried everything else. They've been to the doctor. They've been to the specialist. They've been to the hospital that specializes in their thing. They've had prayer from their church, and they've had prayer from their pastor, and they went to the evangelist and the mm-hmm. and the healing conference and the deliverance conference, and nothing's worked. So now here's these weird people down here. Mm-hmm. Let's go see them, mm-hmm. you know, because I heard somebody <laughs> got healed when they went. So we get to deal with those kinds of folks a lot, wow. you know. But a lot of times we deal with people that they're physically they're fine, but spiritually they've been injured. Mm. So we get to deal with that as well. And uh, and it's a lot of fun. Wow. It's a lot of fun. We have a lady that's kind of come alongside us over the last few months, but she's 52, I think, 49 to 52. And she's been in drug addiction for over half of her life. Wow. Okay. Wow. And she got radically saved. Glory to okay? God. But she came down to healing rooms. She was having a meeting there. And uh, guess what? She went through deliverance and four demons came out of her. Wow. And this happened in a Baptist church. Oh, you know, (laughs) and one of the Baptist folks is like, that's weird. One of them's like, boy, we need more of this. (laughs) Well, it's biblical. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So it's just really cool because a lot of times it's not just fat people that like to go to a buffet. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'll, you'll find some skinny people in there too. So when we look at Christianity as a whole, we see a lot of people and we make snap judgments and say, well, they're not going to go for this. But you know what? They may. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. they see the hand of God, sure. yeah. whether it's in a meeting or an encounter or it's on, maybe you're a salesman and you get that word in their life and they've never believed before. Mm-hmm. But because of that transition from I need your services to, oh, I need your services. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden they're seeing it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And now they're looking into heaven in a way that they didn't know they could before. Beautiful. That's what God uses me to do. Beautiful. Beautiful. So talk to us a little bit about covenant glory and how this revelation has impacted your ministry. Well, it started with me when my whole life I read the Bible. I've been reading the Bible since I can remember. And uh, I've always enjoyed reading, and history always fascinated me. So I started out reading, you know, Samuel and Kings and Mm -hmm. Chronicles, Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, this is a lot of repeat. And then I realized (laughs) it's, you know, timeline (laughs) stories, you know. So, But I've always enjoyed that. But I was reading in 2 Corinthians one time, and I got down to that last verse where it said, I'm transformed into what I look at. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And I, I was like, hmm. Because my whole life, I had been studying the Bible to preach. Mm -hmm. And I'm figuring out ways, not consciously, but just as you read, this will preach this way. And you immediately, in your mind, you draw lines to other passages in the Bible Mm -hmm. that will couple with this so you Uh can build a platform for Mm -hmm. a foundation for a message. Right. And I didn't realize it at that time, but my entire life, I'd only ever studied the Bible to preach. Mm-hmm. also known as studying the Bible to prove what I already know, Ooh. Mm. you know? <laughs> and so, and I'd never studied the Bible to live. Oh, oh wow. Come on, okay. and so preach to us. It's kind of like politics in our nation is we have government officials that'll tell mm-hmm. us what to do and they pass laws for us to abide by. Yeah. And then you find out they're violating those laws. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, but they have immunity or they're untouchable for whatever yeah, reason. They don't get called to account by the government and they're violating the very laws that they're upholding. Mm-hmm. It really hurts me sometimes when I see a law enforcement officer driving 10 or 15 miles an hour faster than the posted speed limit just because they can. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, no, yeah. no, no running lights, no blue lights, no red lights, no siren. They just drive faster than everybody. And they're supposed to be upholding the law. And so I've been griping about that a little bit. But the bottom line is this. I'm actually supposed to be upholding the law, too. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm way more guilty of violating what I teach than what a law enforcement officer is. And God <laughs> says, you need to leave them alone and just focus on James because you are transformed into what you look at mm-hmm. from glory to glory to glory. So if I'm only focused on what everybody else is doing that's wrong, come on. then what I wind up doing is I become judgmental and biased and I may very well judge somebody as something that they're not and miss out on the very opportunity that God has set up for me to release him into their lives mm-hmm. because okay. I'm upset about something that really don't matter. Right. <laughs> you know, and that comes out of studying the Bible to prove what you know mm-hmm. rather than studying the Bible to live. And so I changed that parameter in my life. And I begin to reread a lot of the stuff, including Second Corinthians chapter 3. So verse 18 says that when I look in a mirror— Mm -hmm. I behold the Lord. And I got to thinking about that. I've never seen God when I looked in the mirror, you know? (laughs) I've seen my overweightness. (laughs) I've seen my balding head. I see a lot of things, you know? When I was younger, I looked for pimples, you know? (laughs) When I was really younger, I was looking for whiskers, you know? I was wanting whiskers to come in, you know? (laughs) So I could be a man. There's a lot of things I saw in the mirror, but you know what? I never really saw God, Mm. you know? So I begin to ask the Lord, you know, how do I see you when I look at me? Mm. And that's a tough question because we don't really want to. It's like, what's your greatest strength? That's hard to answer sometimes because yeah. you don't want to sound braggadocious. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yet you don't want to you know, say, well, I have no strengths. Well, that's mm-hmm. a lie. You know Come you're on. strong at some things. Yeah. You know, that's false humility, mm-hmm. So, which is another subject for another time. So how do I see Jesus? So I look at it like this. If I can't see anything else when I look at me, Mm -hmm. what is the eternal gift of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. It's eternal life. Right. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm immortal. It's true. This old body is going to rot away, but me as a conscious individual, this is going to live forever with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if I can't do anything else but look at that when I look at me, if I'll consciously make that choice, Okay, Mm -hmm. then guess what? Every time I do that, that becomes stronger in me Mm -hmm. because I'm being transformed into what I behold from Mm -hmm. glory to glory glory to glory. glory. Mm -hmm. And then once you finally get over that realization that, you know what, I have eternal life and this stuff out here really don't matter. It's just for a short time. It's what Paul said. Right. These troubles are just for a spell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're going to go away pretty quick. Yeah. And then uh, once you realize that, then you can begin to see into heaven Mm -hmm. a whole lot more for yourself. And you realize that, oh, my gosh, when Jesus moved into my heart, he brought a bunch of stuff with him, you Mm -hmm. know, and the Holy Spirit comes in. He's got these nine gifts that Paul talked about. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? He's got a lot more than nine. Absolutely. Paul just taught about nine of them, Mm -hmm. you know, and so there's a lot more there. And so then I begin to be transformed into what he desires for me to be. And so I studied this glory out because I realized what Paul said there. He talked about the covenant that Moses walked in. Mm -hmm. And when he come down off the mount after being in the presence of God, he wore a veil over his face because Mm -hmm. the people couldn't look at him. Yeah, it was too bright. But he said in the covenant that was fading. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at that time, the greatest glory on the earth was in the garden when man had communion with God. Right. And everything Mm -hmm. was perfect. Mm -hmm. And then they ate themselves out of house and home. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I mean, mean, that's exactly what happened. And they get booted from the garden and that glory begin to fade from Mm -hmm. that decision Mm -hmm. until the cross. Yes. And that covenant was over the day Jesus died and a brand new covenant got established that day. And Paul said in that covenant that was fading, he had to wear a veil. So how much greater should the glory be in this covenant, in a covenant where the glory is ever increasing? Mm -hmm. So we should be looking around saying, where's all the shiny Christians? Mm -hmm. You know, not the polished bald heads, you know, (laughs) but the shiny Christian, those walking in the glory of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, James, I need more of a scripture for that because that seems like a lot of conjecture. Well, Habakkuk 2.14. It says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. That's right. And I've been to the sea. Mm -hmm. It's pretty covered with water. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yes. Nowhere where there's supposed to be sea is there not sea. I mean, it's all there, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I believe that God wants to release his glory in the earth. You know, Mm -hmm. my goal is to let Roman or not, well, Romans 12 to as well, let my mind Mm -hmm. be transformed so I can look 
okay? Mm-hmm. In that mirror of life and see the glory of God, the presence of God be transformed into that so I can then carry that glory into my part of the world. Yeah, Wherever that's, that's at, everybody that encounters me should mm-hmm. be able to walk away from that and saying, you know what? Either that guy's really weird or I just saw Jesus. Come on. <laughs> you know? And I might have had to pull my britches up, too, if I was plumbing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you crawl around enough, you'll all able to get exposed. But the best thing about that is, is when you're human to people, is when they can see Jesus in you the most. Yes. Yes. You know, Jesus looked at Peter. Mm-hmm. He wasn't Peter yet. He was still Simon. Yeah. And he says, mm-hmm. who do you say that I am? Well, thou art to Christ. Well, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. Mm-hmm. That's a revelation. Yeah. Okay? And the thing about that is this. What is that? What does that mean? Surround yourself with Christian activities. You may really believe because everybody's saying, well, Mm -hmm. he's God. He's Jesus. He's the Savior of the world. But if you've not had that personal revelation, Mm -hmm. then you've not got to where Peter was on that day where Mm -hmm. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is heaven. So now thou art Peter. You're the rock. And I'm Christ, and upon the knowledge of you know who I am, and I know you. Yes. Now I'm going to build my ecclesia, mm-hmm. my church. Mm-hmm. My, you know, ecclesia meaning governmental legislative body. Mm-hmm. So if the government's going to be on his shoulders and we're the body of Christ, then his government should be on us. Be so honest. our job yeah. as releasing glory is actually governmental in nature. It's not just religious in nature. Right. You know, and so that you have to shift from that. And you don't learn this by studying to preach. You learn this by living (laughs) out what you teach, you know, and understanding that God didn't give me this revelation so Mm -hmm. I could go make people feel bad about their lives, you know, and about how bad they sin. He gave me this revelation so that I could actually be a better Christian, a better son. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and a bride, believe mm-hmm. it or not, mm-hmm. yes. because he's coming back after a bride without spot or wrinkle. Yes. And I'm telling you, we need to have an irony mission in the church, <laughs> <laughs> you yes. know, because yes. it's the bride spot that's wrinkled. Yeah. Yeah. It's the bride that's wrinkled. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, which says people that are in God can do wicked things. It's true. Mm-hmm. And it's we true. can do it and not feel bad about it if we're not careful. Mm-hmm. So I believe that he wants to release this glory and I yes. believe he wants me Amen. to have a good attitude about it. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Wow. Beautiful. You know, I've just been meditating the, in a whole new way the last few days about the bride and being his bride. And, you know, we have these moments of revelation and in our walk, sometimes we're occupied with the revelation of God as our father and us as his children, and that the whole purpose of life is to grow us up into maturity and to be childlike but not childish. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all of a sudden the Lord is just kind of awakening a new revelation about walking with him as his bride. And we see in in 1 John where it talks about he that has this hope in himself will purify himself. As we have this hope, it's about submitting to the presence of God, submitting to the Holy Spirit, submitting into allowing him to work the fruit of his presence, the character traits of who Jesus is. You know, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and it was out of that anointing that he did all of his ministry. And we are Christians, and Christ means anointed one. So we're to be walking in that same anointing that comes from his Holy Spirit. So it's that process of getting the wrinkles out and getting the spots out. And think about the love relationship. I've been working on a daily devotional out of the Song of Solomon, and I'm just getting started on it. But it's kind of opening my spirit up in a new way to his love and to his passion for us. The word beloved you know, where it talks in Song of Solomon about, I am my beloved, my beloved is mine. That comes from a root word that means to boil. And my grandmother used to do, part of her laundry was washing my grandfather's hankies, his handkerchiefs, because <laughs> he didn't use Kleenex. He, he wow. Old school, you know, he, he had his handkerchiefs. And she would put a certain pot, it was just for that, on the stove 
and she would boil those hankies with <laughs> oxidol. <laughs> and I'm just saying that there is a boiling that takes out spots and it kills germs and it makes your hankies nice and clean again. And I'm thinking about the boiling point of his love that is a passion for us, that is a passion to help us become bridal mm -hmm. and not just good cookie cutter Christians that are doing the stuff that we learned in Sunday school to do. But like you're talking about, letting the word of God dwell in us richly that will be life changing. Yeah. The Bible said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same applies to husbands. Okay. But the problem is most people before they get married, live in boyfriend, girlfriend mentality. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Literally, and I'm talking to all the people that are not married, begin to live like you're married. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not talking about having breaking a marital vow. I'm not talking about that kind of life, but begin to live as if you're already married and be a wife as a course of life. Mm -hmm. Be a husband as a course of life. And then when you get married, you don't have to transition mm -hmm. and figure out who you are now. Yeah. Okay. The same is true for the bride of Christ. Okay. Okay. We are the bride of Christ. We've not been to the marriage supper of the lamb yet, mm -hmm. but yet many Christians are living like girlfriend mentality with Jesus Christ. Come on. Does that make sense? Come on. We're not ready to be the bride yet. Mm -hmm. And he's not marrying a girlfriend. He's marrying a wife because he who finds a wife finds, finds a, a good, good thing. thing. Yes. <laughs> and it's a complete different mentality than just yeah. living out here. You had 10 virgins. Five of them were living like a wife. Five of them had a girlfriend mentality. Hmm. We're all doing the right stuff. They were virgins. They kept themselves chaste. They were saving themselves for marriage, which you should. Mm -hmm. Okay. But five of them were living like girlfriends. Hmm. Five mm -hmm. of them weren't ready. The other five were living like the wife already. And I think it's amazing because one of the funniest things my dad ever told, and he said this in public, he's behind the pulpit when he said it. He said, I was praying the other day and I was complaining to God about my wife, oh. <laughs> my oh. mom, you know. <laughs> he said this in church. Yeah, Oops. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, he said, the Lord spoke to me and said, look, you're my bride. How frustrated you think I am? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And so I, that was so funny Slap. because my dad, my dad's not a humorist. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. not funny and not like that. And so he wasn't trying to tell a joke. He was really being serious. Yeah. So how many times have we taken issues with our spouse to heaven? Yeah. And if we really got quiet before the Lord, he was like, you know what? Did you do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, heaven's saying, and I'm having to have a lot of grace with you too, mm. you know? And so maybe you should get the beam out of your own eye mm -hmm. before you try to take the speck out of your spouses, yeah. you know? So live as if you're already married to Jesus and you have access to things you don't have access to because see, a girlfriend is out running around when the groom comes around to be with the soon to be bride, mm -hmm. she's over here doing her own thing. So the things that he gives this group that's in waiting for him, this group don't get. Mm -hmm. And so there's a relationship aspect. If you're living as a wife already mm -hmm. that you just get more, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's more covenant, there's more glory. And plus when he comes, you're ready to go. Yes. You know, and so yeah. it's an amazing thing to think about the glory of God and the brideship because it's all about covenant. Yes. You know, it's all about covenant. And I don't think we understand enough about covenant and blood and faithfulness and loyalty. You know, I think a lot of gangbangers in these big cities know more about loyalty and covenant mm -hmm. than what we do because there are a lot of them are willing to lay down their life for nothing mm -hmm. because of the covenant that they have with these other really bad guys. Yeah. yeah, But yet we have Christian believers that we fall out over, you know, what we ate on eating Sunday, you know, <laughs> well, he brought Popeye's chicken, you know, and not KFC, you know? And so now all of a sudden we've got a falling out, you know, over a <laughs> meal, chicken. you know, that, that don't even matter, yeah. you know? And when we fight over the, whether the rapture is going to happen pre, mid or post, Come on. you know, and people divide over this stuff over something that hasn't even happened yet. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, right. why would we let ourselves be drawn into that kind of 
nonsense when there's so much glory to be had. Yes. Wow. You know, and where you at on that mountain of God is your business. Maybe God called you to this mountain and you need to be there right there mm -hmm. in that place. Maybe he called you to climb up the mountain and go higher. But man, be at that place and release the glory that you've been given because everybody in your life needs to see that and it needs to see the faithfulness of God to man. Amen. And that's how they wow. see it is by you showing that, hey, God's been faithful to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and displaying that in your life. So kingdom authority, kingdom covenant, walking through a place and realizing that, that authority is with you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make it happen. Right. Yeah. I've never went out into a peach orchard and heard the trees groaning. <laughs> trying to push out some peaches. You know what I'm saying? They just get in the presence of the sun every day and they soak in the rain when it comes and they yield to the caretaking provided to them mm -hmm. and they bear fruit. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. And if we'll get in the presence of Jesus yeah. and let the sun shine yes. in our lives, yes. soak in the water of the word. Mm -hmm. And yeah. let the caretaker prune us where we need to be pruned. We will be bountiful yes. in production of the fruit of the Spirit. And we don't have to struggle for it. We don't have to mm -hmm. fight for it. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes those people that make us angry really push us. But at the same time, you do not have to struggle to bear fruit if you'll just stay in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. That's, that's all you have to do. Absolutely true. Would Amen. you pray for our listeners? Yes. Yes, I will. Lord, I pray for every person that will hear this podcast. God, even those that don't, there's people that's going to be in the next room of somebody else listening to this on an earbud. Maybe they're sneaking around listening to it because they live in a house where there's unbelievers. Lord, you send your word and heal their disease. Yes. And so, Lord, we just send your word yes. to every home, every vehicle, every subway, every yes. train car, every airplane. Every motorcycle. You know, every motorcycle, mm -hmm. you know, every ship, whatever mode mm -hmm. that people's ever bicycle, people's traveling, oh. they're listening to this, they're walking through a park. Lord, let your glory emanate from that place. Lord, even as people tried to get in Peter's presence so the shadow would fall on them. Lord, as people listen to this, I pray your presence would be there and that their shadow would release what's overshadowing them. Yes. And so in Jesus' name, I just pray for victory to come. Yes. I pray yes, for Lord. healing, divine healing to come yes. in Jesus' name to every person that hears this. Lord, we call their bodies into alignment with the blueprint of heaven. Yes, Jesus drew their blueprint, their body, soul, and spirit, and how they're all connected together. And in Jesus' name, we call blood disorders back in alignment with Amen. Jesus, bone structure, yes. muscle structure, the yes. neurological mm -hmm. patterns in the brain, yes, those synapses that's supposed to be firing properly in Jesus name. It's a timing thing. It's a rhythm thing. It's a frequency thing. And we call our bodies, everyone that listens to this back into alignment with heaven yes, in Lord. Jesus name. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much, James. We so appreciate you coming and sharing with us on this. Well, it's an honor to be with you guys. Thank you for sharing this place with me. It's an amazing honor to be here. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, this is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence. <laughs>